Hello and welcome to this next video on the themes of Macbeth. Hopefully you've watched all the others and you're becoming a bit of a superstar. There was the video on ambition and the video on masculinity and cruelty and then another on the divine right of kings. And today we're simply going to think about tyranny. So Macbeth is frequently referred to as a tyrant in the play. Um, and a tyrant is a ruler who has no regard for their subjects. Um, they're ruthless, often murderous, and opponents are swiftly um, assassinated or they might be tried through a legal system and then executed. So let's see what Shakespeare is up to with the theme of tyranny. Uh, each new morn, new widows howl, new orphans cry. There's not a one of, oh sorry, that's the first quotation. Um, so this description of Scotland is um, a dramatic one to try and show what happens to the ordinary people when um, a tyrant takes power. Well, partly that's to, dis, um, to describe how awful Macbeth has been for Scotland so that the audience are pleased when he's eventually killed. But... Shakespeare's playing an interesting game here. He's also performing this play for the first time in front of King James, uh, King James' relatively new king. And the crucial bit of contextual information here is there's just been the Catholic gunpowder plot in 1605 where um, barrels of gunpowder were found underneath one of the chambers of the House of Commons where all the government were to meet with the king um, a huge number of nobles, and uh, they were all supposed to be blown up and killed. Um, now, what kind of reaction would you expect the king to have? Well, surely you'd expect him to go out and find out every important Catholic that he could and start interrogating them and seeing if they knew anything about the plot, if they helped the plotters in any way, um, if they sponsored them financially or were hiding them. And you can imagine a sense of paranoia here. In other words, many people would have expected King James to act just like Macbeth here. What does Macbeth say he'll do? He says there's not a one of them, talking about the thanes, the nobles, but in his cat house I keep a servant feed, a feed as in paid. So he pays servants in all the thanes' houses as spies. Um, and Macbeth is warning um, James, King James, not to behave like Macbeth does, much as he would want to, because he's suggesting if you start behaving this way, the country will turn against you, and more importantly, the other nobles will turn against you, not just the Catholic ones, um, but other nobles, and uh, you would then get deposed. He would cease to be the king. And then another way he lays this message on is in... Uh, Macbeth's reaction to Lady Macbeth's death. Um, he says some really weird things when she dies, and the reason that, that he says them is because they're not actually about her. They're directed to King James to try and persuade him what kind of king he needs to be. So let's read them. And that which should accompany old age as honour, love, obedience, troops of friends, I must not look to have but in their stead curses, not loud, but deep, mouth honour. Uh, so what we're looking at here is Macbeth realising that becoming king was nothing. Um, on its own, it's not satisfied any of his desires, and actually his desires will be quite human as a king. He wants to reach an old age. He wants to be honoured um, because he's a good king. He wants to be loved because he's a good king and therefore people to obey him because he was a good king. And this would lead to troops of friends instead of uh, troops, army troops of enemies. Um, and so this is Shakespeare subtly saying to King James, look, this is the old age you want. Don't be like Macbeth. Be a good king and you will get honour and obedience and troops of friends. And you won't have people cursing you um, and pretending to be your subjects, but actually plotting against you 
uh, mouth honour, as he calls it. And there's a further interesting possibility uh, that Shakespeare himself was Catholic. So um, if you've looked at the context of this play at all, um, you'll know that uh, there's a lot of reference to equivocation. And equivocation was a Catholic um, idea uh, because it was uh, against the law to practice um, your Catholic faith um, following um, Henry VIII's um, excommunication from the Catholic Church and setting up um, the Anglican Church. So everyone had to renounce their Catholic faith and become a Protestant. Um, but here's the thing. Um, the Catholic um, priests, uh, led by the Pope, decided that it was okay for a Catholic now to lie uh, and pretend to be a Protestant, but actually still to be a Catholic. And this was called equivocation. Um, and Shakespeare might well have been a Catholic himself, and therefore... Um, this instruction to King James about being a better king and not like uh, Macbeth could actually be a way of protecting the Catholics in, um, in England. He's trying to persuade James to go easy on those Catholics because Shakespeare himself could have been one. Um, now, that's very tentative. We don't know for sure. Um, there's lots of debate as to um, whether Shakespeare was a Catholic or not. But there you go, there's a bit of context that you can introduce as to why he focuses on the idea of tyranny and what that has to do with the dangers in his society at the time of uh, James becoming an utterly ruthless king and um, carrying out political assassinations. Well, I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Um, good luck with your revision, uh, with your exams if you have any, and don't forget to subscribe for more.